So I'm really excited to introduce Jere Carter. Um, she is the self-described, if you follow her on Twitter and she's active in social media, the agri-nerd of the research park, which sounds perhaps a little derogatory, but if you know what she does at John Deere Technology Innovation Center, you might know why that is that she has that handle. Now she got her degrees at the University of Illinois, first in plant biotechnology, and then later getting her PhD in informatics, which led her to also have a career that took off at John Deere right here at the research park. And I thought it was really good to have this as a fun topic to get us started for the day. It's one that speaks to machine learning, but also is about ways that we can interact better as a community. So while she's at the John Deere Technology Innovation Center, they had a really neat experience with the AWS Deep Racer League. And she competes in that in her spare time, which I don't know how she has. In addition to her role as a data scientist at John Deere, she's also an adjunct instructor at Columbia University teaching machine learning. And she's been helping even in the pandemic with research at San Diego State University thinking about COVID data. So let's start our engines. Let's grab some coffee. If you don't have a cup, you might need this to help fuel you throughout the day. And let's hear from Dr. Jure Carter talking about AWS Deep Racer League. All right. Can we see the slides okay? We can see you. Okay. Okay, great. All right, well, uh, thank you, Laura, for that uh, great introduction. And today I want to take a little bit of time and talk to you all about the AWS Deep Racer and my experience with it. So just a quick agenda of the topics that I'll be covering today. So I'm going to, I've already been introduced, but have a little slide about myself and then also talk a little bit about the John Deere Technology Innovation Center, which we abbreviate as JDTIC. And I'll also talk a little bit about the AWS Deep Racer and what reinforcement learning is. Then also go over my experience with the Deep Racer, with the Deere competition, and discuss some value added from cool technologies like this. And last but not least, talk about the Deep Racer League itself and some future plans with that. So like Laura mentioned, uh, University of Illinois graduate, um, I was also a former intern uh, at the John Deere Technology Innovation Center. And so I was really fortunate to be able to stay there and um, get hired on as a data scientist. And currently I work for the ISG data science and uh, engineering team and also adjunct faculty at Columbia and doing some volunteer research at uh, San Diego uh, State University. And fun fact, the um, picture on the right where I'm in my John Deere gear um, was actually at one of the um, big data summit networking events. So I want to just take a moment and talk a little bit about uh, JD Tech and its role in emerging tech and kind of set the stage for our center and why projects like the Deep Racer fold very nicely into what we do at the center and um, some aspects that are important in the tech field. So there's really two um, major roles that uh, our center plays in a research park. And for Deer, um, it, one, it's a hub for emerging technology. And the second is that it's, it's a gateway to the exceptional talent that we have located at the University of Illinois. And so we actually have two uh, buildings in research park. So in the bottom left is a picture of the outside of our office building. If you drive by, you'll see our green tractor out front. And then right next to that is our lab. And we also refer to it as the garage since it uh, literally is a massive garage. So since 2008, um, we've basically rebooted like five different times to meet Deer's tech needs. So one of our superpowers, uh, so to speak, is this ability to be able to change fast with the changing needs, especially in the ag tech uh, field. And so when we think about what it means to be an emerging tech hub, there's some main areas that we focus on. Um, one of them is sustainability, not only from the enterprise as a whole, but also what it means to the customer from the customer's point of view. 
Then we also uh, look at things like the core tech stack. So things that are on product or in cab being used um, as well as our uh, web and mobile tech. Then there's the advanced sensing side of things, looking at things like IoT, localization, precision ag, and then for advanced algorithms, um, looking at you know, machine learning and more intense things like artificial intelligence. Then when we think about uh, Deere's role as a, as a gateway for the University of Illinois, um, some areas that we've folded students into include large ag production systems focused on in the agronomy space, but also small ag production and precision ag analytics focused in the data science space. So, you know, due to our exploratory nature of being able to look at these uh, different types of technology, agriculture, and ag tech, um, this pirate flag is just one outward expression of some of our more larger and exciting projects that we've worked on. And it's really a great representation of the types of technologies and ideas and things that we work on, um, including the uh, AWS Deep Racer, something we've recently kind of folded into our portfolio. And so my hope is that um, eventually we, we will have a checkered flag there as well. So now let's let's jump into what the Deep Racer is and find out more about it. But my first question is, you know, does your car drive itself? Uh, you're probably familiar with the autonomous car brand uh, Tesla, or you've probably even used uh, different autonomous uh, features in your vehicle that you may not have known were, um, such as self-steering or self-parking, um, or adaptive cruise control where the car automatically changes speed based on distance and speed to other vehicles. But now you can actually go through and test out these types of technologies in a really uh, more accessible format. And one of these is the AWS Deep Racer or the Amazon Web Services Deep Racer. So essentially what this is, is a 1 18th scale race car that's autonomous. And in this case, that means it's self-driving and it operates uh, based on being trained with a model that's a reinforcement learning model. And that's a type of uh, machine learning. And so what you do is actually train it in a, vi uh, a virtual environment, and then you can actually test it out on a real physical track. So on the left, we have the original Deep Racer, and it uses a single stereo camera as its sensor. So it takes image inputs, and it can be used in time trial races. And then on the right is the Deep Racer Evo. And the Evo is basically just a little bit of an upgrade from the original. And it actually uses two stereo cameras and a LiDAR sensor for distance. And this allows it to participate in obstacle avoidance and head-to-head -head races. So you can actually purchase a sensor kit to upgrade the original. So what exactly is reinforcement learning, what's involved with that, what does it look like? So in the context of our uh, deep racer, um, basically you have an agent. So in this case, it's our car here and it interacts with an environment. So in this case would be the racetrack. And basically what the agent does is performs actions um, interacting with this, this environment to achieve a specific goal and in turn doing that, maximizing the reward that it's getting. And so the agent's gonna perform these different actions at random, so to speak, um, based on some policy rules that you set. And so this is kind of the process of uh, iteration. It performs these actions, it figures out, okay, what's the reward I got? And depending on what that is, determines its next action. And so a reward is associated with um, every action that the car takes, but you can actually um, also punish the car or provide no reward whatsoever. So the car actually uses a specific policy algorithm that Amazon has chosen, and it involves using two neural networks, which you've probably heard of before. Um, so one neural network uh, decides what action the car should take based on sensor input, and the second neural network um, decides you know, some estimations around what the, it thinks the reward is going to be. So this is really similar to 
real life learning when we think about let's for example say you have a dog and you want your dog to learn a new trick so if the dog does the trick right you get excited you give them a treat right that positive reinforcement and over time they will perform the trick correctly more which is similar to this example so if you want to get started with the deep racer um the first step is buying the car um, and assembling it very minimal assembly um, and then the second step would be actually calibrating the car so you want to make sure that it works correctly um, that the wheels are moving and and the sensor inputs are correct and then the next step would be training a reinforcement a learning model in simulation so aws actually has a deep racer service set up for you that you can use to train and evaluate your models and then the next uh, step would be racing the car virtually or physically. If you're only gonna do virtual races, you don't need a physical car, but I recommend it because, um, you know, eventually you're gonna wanna build a physical track and actually test the car um, out on the track. So in the process of training your car, um, there's basically a, a cycle that you would go through. Um, and so the, the first step when you go into the system, um, it's going to ask you about what kind of race type you want, uh, you know, different specs of the car and the racetrack type. So like I mentioned earlier, there's um, time trials, obstacle detection, or head-to-head -head races. And you can customize things like the max speed of the car, the uh, max steering angle, things like that. And then the second step is actually designing the reward function. So this uses um, a little bit of code, specifically Python, and the documentation actually provides a lot of um, clarity and examples and different parameters you can use. The third step here is choosing the hyperparameters for the model. And so hyperparameters are things you choose before the model actually performs uh, training. An example of this would be entropy, which essentially introduces some uh, randomness into the actions taken by the agent. The next step would then be choosing the duration for the virtual training session. So you can actually decide, okay, how long do you want your model to train for? And it's really cool because you can actually watch the virtual simulation um, training in real time, uh, which is kind of cool. And then you would choose the number of trials, race tra the race type and the racetrack to test the model and simulation. So this is the evaluation process. So you've trained it, now you wanna see how well it works. So you can do that virtually. But after that, uh, you know, again, recommending that physical testing. So while it may have worked great in the virtual evaluation, still seeing how it works in the real world is um, pretty cool as well. So just in case you're interested in making a track, which I highly recommend, um, the Deep Racer documentation provides extensive track building instructions and also some sample plans to work from. So uh, some things that I found kind of uh, key to making the track uh, work um, and get set up correctly was using some uh, foam solid color um, tiles that you just lock together and using white and yellow duct tape. Um, these are actually really important, the widths and the colors, because that is what the sensors are looking at. And so making sure all of this is correct and that you have a solid color background the car is driving on is really important. So just in case you're wondering what a track with these items look like, um, since we couldn't be in the office uh, due to pandemic restrictions, I thought, well, I might as well just build the track in my basement and, and see how it goes. Um, so the, the track that I have here is a 13 by 13 foot loop, and it has left turns only or right turns only, depending on which direction the car is facing. And so, like I mentioned earlier, the colors here are really important, as well as the fact that you have solid lines and dotted lines so that the car can accurately detect uh, where it's at on the track. So when we look at the complete cycle um, of the, the training and evaluation process, on the left is actually just a screenshot of what the deep racer looks like in the simulation. So there's a little track there with the car and you can watch it go around. And then in the middle is a reward graph. So you can actually see the um, actual point amount of the reward that it's received and then see how much of the track it's completed. So in this case, this is a pretty nice curve and you want it to be kind of a nice smooth increase all the way to hopefully that you know 100% mark. 
And then on the very right is a screenshot of what it actually looks like when you're deploying um, the model on your car, uh, your physical car in real time. So this is the screenshot of my car with the one of the cameras looking at the track. And this is where you actually um, can see the model running and see what the car sees. So how exactly did I get involved with the AWS Deep Racer in the first place? Well, uh, John Deere hosted a company-wide competition that was actually hosted through AWS. So uh, me and some of my colleagues thought it would be awesome to do something that we haven't done before and get involved. So like I mentioned, with this uh, internal competition, anybody in the company was able to participate. There was a lot of teams. And um, my team in the spring, the data-driven innovation team, we won second place, which was really, really awesome. Um, the MC also said that our model was really aggressive because it would take speeds at full, uh, full speed, uh, turns at full speed, which was kind of funny. Um, but they had a process where they had online time trials and the top teams would advance to semifinals and eventually finals where they had uh, physical races. Unfortunately, due to pandemic travel restrictions, our team wasn't able to travel to the physical race at headquarters. But what was great was that they actually live streamed our model running on a deep racer there. So um, we could actually chat with them and watch our car as it went around the track, which was really cool. And as I kind of mentioned earlier, uh, the technical processes of like submitting the times and things were actually hosted through a custom setup that was designed uh, by AWS. So this is me and my colleague Crystal. And of course we had to get a selfie in front of um, us on the leaderboard. And um, on the, in the bottom left is just a screenshot of what it looked like um, during the live stream. So they had the track set up in the auditorium at headquarters and it was uh, pretty cool to watch. So when we think about this experience, there was two main things I wanted to mention. Um, one being how did the process go and also what did our team learn? So with the process, the service was pretty easy to get uh, set up and get started. And you don't need any local processing power really because all the model training and everything is done with the AWS cloud. You also just need a minimal amount of coding to get a good output at the beginning. The car um, you know, may not be that fast um, at first, but that's okay because, you know, as you iterate through, um, you know, you get more experience and figure out what works and doesn't work, you can increase that output. And then last but definitely not least, it's super fun to try and beat each other's times and watch the car train in real time as well. Um, it's also funny sometimes when you break the training in the car um, and it just spins in circles and things like that. And then the second part, you know, what did our team learn? First of all, I think how to use a new technology. When I mentioned that uh, JD Tick is a place for emerging tech, you know, we really designed the space to say, okay, we want to go explore new things. So this really, the deep, uh, deep racer really fits into that. And then also how reinforcement learning works. That's something our team hadn't worked with before, and it was a really good uh, exper uh, experience to work with that. And then also how, you know, learning how to work together to find these optimal solutions for machine learning problems. So, you know, in data scientists, you know, we're not developing models by ourselves, talking to no one, and then it gets deployed. Um, that's not how it works. We're all in a team, we're all in this together, and we have to figure out what are the best solutions. And then we also use this as a means to connect with others, both inside the company who weren't as familiar with this or those outside of the company at events like this. And it makes for a really good talking point around um, machine learning. So what's the, the larger value of a, you know, tools like this, technologies like this, um, and then also specifically the, the deep racer itself? And so I would think, you know, kind of the first aspect is that technical skill development. So you're developing an understanding of a, a type of machine learning that you may not be familiar with. Um, and in this case, being able to experiment with something a little bit more complicated, like reinforcement learning in an environment that's pretty low risk and highly accessible. So you can really get up and running and see results right away. 
And then also building that understanding in trial and error processes and evaluations in machine learning, being able to iterate through and see what's what's working, what's not working, and accurately interpret that output is really important. Then when we think about softer skill development, strengthening your teamwork abilities, you know, whoever you're working with, students and full-time employees. Um, being able to increase your communication on technical topics to a variety of audiences, um, you know, using technologies like this, and then also expanding that employee and company awareness of new technologies. So you're trying to go out there, find that new thing, find that next thing, but in order to do that, you have to explore what's out here right now. What can we work with right now that can get us to that next step? And so some practical examples of reinforcement uh, learning and how that type of uh, training process can help is doing uh, leading to things like summarization of long texts, like for journal articles, uh, robotic stock trading, dynamic price adjustment, as well as, you know, in the healthcare space, things like optimizing patient treatments um, for people. So if all of this sounds awesome, there's definitely uh, ways to get more involved. So one of them is the AWS Deep Racer League that uh, AWS actually um, hosts. And it's a global autonomous racing league where anybody who creates an AWS account can actually participate um, in these virtual races to win prizes. And physical races used to be available. Hopefully they'll come back. And you actually don't need a physical car to be able to participate in these virtual races. So there's a whole bunch of different tracks, different difficulties for the different race uh, types that you can do. And so I took a, a screenshot of just one of the tracks they had uh, um, last month. You can see it's pretty intense. And community races can be organized, which are not officially sponsored by AWS, but anyone can set them up and race with friends and colleagues. But that leads me to my final point, um, and that is we want to start a league here in Research Park. So we want to expand on the community racing model, uh, similar to the DEER experience, by including other companies. So we're in the process of determining the technical details, but if you're interested in creating a team, uh, three people is the uh, optimal suggestion. One person has to chase the physical car. One person uh, is in charge of the making sure the model's running, and then another, um, you know, either manager or site director for supervision. So we hope to get teams together this year, uh, launch the races um, next year, large socially distanced space, and continue outside. So if you're a research park company that's interested in participating, you can contact myself as well as Kathy McArthur. Our emails are there um, below. So I think everyone should definitely start their engines. Uh, thanks, any questions? Thanks so much, Jure, for telling us about how you've been using AWS Deep Racer League to help you with skill development and your teams across John Deere. I'd like you to tell us a little bit more about the work you do at John Deere, if you don't mind. Um, you've touched a number of different projects that have data. And as you'd said, reinforcement learning is one way that you're improving some of those skills. Can you tell us a little bit more about your work? Yeah, so, um, uh, you know, just recently, um, we had a little bit of a transition. So I'm actually on a new team currently, our data science uh, and engineering team. And that's focused more on um, the big data side of things, precision, uh, precision ag space. I'm relatively new, so I'm still learning the ropes on that team. Um, but for the past about four and a half years, I was part of the data-driven innovation team. And that was really focused on doing a lot of different data science projects for different areas in the company, um, whether it was working with the social media team, um, you know, analyzing sentiment analysis around how people were talking about the brand um, on Twitter, or um, looking at uh, engine failures. So doing some work around, you know, um, building some models to figure out what may cause some issues with different types of machinery, um, as well as working with the soil and crop systems team. So looking at materials testing and properties of crops. So uh, I've worked on a lot of uh, different data, a variety of, of areas and, and different sizes as well. So, and we work with students really heavily and that's a pretty key um, component to our success at the center as well. 
So Dre, I think you got started with John Deere while you were still a graduate student at the University of Illinois. How did you find John Deere and why did you decide that that was a good choice for you to work while you were in school? Yeah, so um, I actually, I was, I was in a grad uh, school class and actually one of our assignments was to attend a conference in a field of our choice. And so I was like, oh, well, the um, Ag Tech Innovation Summit was something that I actually hadn't attended before that point. Um, and so I, I went to that event uh, at the at the I Hotel, and I actually happened to sit down at a table full of John Deere representatives. And that's something that, you know, as a grad student, you're like, oh, this is cool. Like, you don't think much of it. Um, but the site director at the time, uh, Julian Sanchez, was like, hey, you should come check out the office. We'll show you what we do and, and learn about it. Um, and from that meeting and, and further discussions um, is when the data team got started and, and I was hired on. So it was, it was uh, definitely the networking component and getting out there and, and talking to people made all the difference. <laughs> And engaging with students is something that I think you plan to do with this Deep Racer League. So what have you seen on campus when you talk to students? Is this something that uh, has become a new passion, a new game for them, those that are interested in software and data? So I, I'm not really sure um, how many students, I guess, are, are you know, super uh, kind of in the know about the deep racer. I know some of my friends that are still students um, were pretty surprised that this was something you could do. Um, and so I think it's, we really have an opportunity, especially with the league at the park um, coming to engage them more because the few students that I have talked to are like, that's really cool. I didn't know that was something that you could do. Um, and so I think this is actually a really good opportunity to um, bring some of the best and brightest minds on campus in and participate in something like this. So, Well, I love seeing that you transformed your basement. Um, did you have to clear out a room or you just happened to have an AWS room in your house? No, I, I, had, to, I had to move some furniture to get the space. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, it seems true to brand for you that you would make, would make that happen and, and add some excitement within your home and, and apply it. Um, thanks so much for your leadership in trying to create a league here at the research park. As you said in your slides, there's a couple of ways to start participating, and we will be looking for teams of three. I saw BP as an example in the chat talking about that they already have a car. So if anybody who's listening to this wants to know more about getting involved in the research park deep racer league, please reach out to Dre Carter, Kathy MacArthur on our team will also be helping, or any of us can help think through the logistics and how you might participate. I'd really like to thank you, Dre, for joining us. Do you have any other just sort of parting words or advice for everybody? I think it's a, a fun time just to get to know each other as well. Yeah, I think um, if, if this is something of interest, um, you know, anyone can get up and running and get started with this. and. Um, I highly recommend it. I love trying new tech. And um, I will say there's a lot of different ways to be creative with, with the process as well. Um, we even saw some custom uh, car chassis designs, which was pretty cool as well. So it's definitely a lot of room for creativity here. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I do have some questions. I'm looking in the chat. Oh, okay. So you're not off the hook quite yet. Okay. It's beyond deck. <laughs> um, so somebody had saying very nice presentation and they were looking at your, your dissertation on behaviors in Facebook amongst Illinois farmers. Could you speak about that? And then I'm going to go to a deep racer question. Yeah, so um, my dissertation work was focused on understanding um, what might drive farmers and other ag professionals to turn to Facebook as a tool to use um, agriculture information and then um, also looking at some of the types of information uh, that they were looking at on ag and searching for. And um, I think one of the kind of most interesting insights that I took away from that was that people um, really like their chickens a lot. It was something I was very surprised by. Um, but then also there's a huge component of that community aspect. Um, when we think about, you know, uh, people in the ag industry, you know, really working together, even, you know, look, I look at, um, you know, the, the company of deer as well. Um, it's like a big family and everyone talks to each other, communicates with each other. So that was also something that 
played a really big role in them turning to a tool um, on social media like Facebook to be able to look for ag information and find solutions to their problems. Great, thanks for sharing. Okay, back to Deep Racer League. Um, Dirk wants to know, what was the key insider trick that made your racer better than most of the others? Oh man. Um, I, so like I, I, I think I, I mentioned, um, the MC of the deer competition said that our model was really aggressive, meaning we only needed one complete lap to, uh, to get a time to be on the board. So if that meant we failed and did not complete almost all of the laps that our car attempted, uh, that's basically what happened. And so um, really my recommendation would be um, trying some of the extremes. So putting the car at full speed, it's maximum granularity of everything and just seeing what happens because you can learn a lot from the extreme ends of things. And then from that tapering it down. Um, the other key advice uh, piece would be watching your competitors. We could actively see when people were changing their times from different teams and getting faster. And so from that, you can actually start to get some ideas um, into what exactly you need to improve on and, uh, and, and work from there, so. Great, well, thanks again for joining us and answering those questions. Get involved in the league. For those companies, again, in the research park, we'd love to see you participate. Next up, we're going to have Riverbed. So thanks, Jeray. And